Ruins of Mayhem. Hello, and well met. Ruins of Mayhem is a fast-paced tactical card game for two, based on the many wars fought between the Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons. In this video, we will show you the basics of our battle system. The aim of the game is to destroy the fortress of the other player, who reduces the points of the opponent's fortress to zero, wins the game. To do so, you must fight the opponent with your units. First, let's inspect the battlefield. The battlefield is made up of three lanes. And three rows. In this video, we will only feature two rows. The third one has a special role that we will show you in the future. When you play a card from your hand, you get to decide in which lane and which row you want to place it. During a fight, the cards in the first row protect the ones behind them. Let's take a closer look at a card. Each card has a price. A name, a description, an attack point, a health point, and a type too. Units can suffer penalty when fighting against another unit based on their type of weaponry. The right placement of cards on the battlefield is essential to win the game. Horsemen units suffer penalty fighting melee units. A cavalry unit suffers penalty fighting against a spear-armed unit. And spearmen are topped by melee units. Apart from these three basic type of units, there are several others in the game, like missile units and heroes. But let's just stick with the basic types for now. Ruins of Mayhem features custom dice, creating a fun combination of look and tactics. The rolls range from 0 to 3, with a doubled chance of rolling 1 or 2. Only those cards are entitled to roll a die that are not suffering penalty. The careful arrangement of units can give you a significant advantage. Now, let's inspect the cards of the enemy. The players have their own turns. Now it is our turn to attack. But first we must regroup our army, for we would suffer significant disadvantage attacking with the current arrangement. During your battle phase, you can decide which lane should attack the opposing lane or not. If the attacked lane has cards, then the cards will fight each other. In case the lane is empty, you can directly attack the fortress of the opponent. We will attack with all three lanes in this turn. Our fortress is in danger in the red lane since no unit is protecting it. The enemy could attack it freely. Let's move our armored spearmen there and attack their horsemen. They will suffer penalty and only we get to roll a die. In the yellow lane, two melee units would fight, which means both could roll a die. Let's put our scouts there to trample them with a charge and make the enemy unable to roll. We shall bring the axemen there too to support the attack and put the swordsmen in the green lane. Now we have the upper hand. Attack men! May the gods protect us all and take the fallen to Valhalla! Let's charge them with our scouts. When two cards battle, they damage each other. The damage caused is the combination of the attack point of the card and the rolled value. Both the defender and the attacker suffers damage, 
After this, you examine the health points. And if the caused damage is equal or exceeds the health point of a card, then the card has been defeated and you tilt it. In this case, only we get to roll a die since the swordsmen suffer a penalty fighting against our cavalry unit. Amazing roll. The scouts got three bonus attack points, so we call six points of damage to the swordsmen, leaving them with zero health points. The swordsmen cause four points of damage to our scouts' health of four. Both units have fallen in the fight. Now, our axemen can freely go in and attack the fortress with a combination of their base attack point and bonus points from a die, since no unit is protecting the yellow lane. We rolled one bonus point. Our axemen damaged the Anglo-Saxon's fortress with three attack points. Let's see the green lane. Our swordsmen attack the Anglo-Saxon Thane swordsmen here. It is an elite unit that will surely defeat ours, but if we roll one or more bonus points, we can take them to the afterlife with us. Since the two cards are of the same unit type, both units can roll a die. Curse us! We rolled zero. We damaged the enemy card with four points, so they have one health point left. The enemy rolled one, so they damage our swordsmen with six points. The unfortunate turn of events leave our swordsmen dead. But the Thanes survived our attack. We'll get them next time. To the red lane now. We are attacking with our spearman unit, so the enemy horseman suffers penalty. Only we get to roll a die. We roll two. We cause five points of damage and only suffering three points. We've defeated the enemy unit, but we only have two health points left. Our spearman is in the thick of the battle, and now must fight the unit in the second row. Since the horsemen was protected by the peasants, we must fight them too. We can only survive this battle if the enemy rolls zero. Both units get to roll a die. Since the peasant's card has its own type, the penalty rule of the three basic unit types does not affect it and can always roll a die. We rolled one, causing four points of damage in total. Damn it! The peasants roll one. Both units fall in the battle. And that's it for our attack in this turn. We only have an axemen unit left on the battlefield, while the enemy has a stronger card left damaged. Surviving cards regain their full health at the end of the turn. The tilted cards all go to the discard pile if they are not saved by a priest unit. We caused three damage to the enemy fortress, bringing their inevitable defeat even closer. Overall, we could have been more lucky, but we still managed to deal a blow to the enemy. In the next video, we will show you more about the rules and the resource management of our game. We rely on your support. Like, subscribe, and share our content and help us make Ruins of Mayhem happen. We will crowdfund our game in the second half of October. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Farewell, and see you on the field of battle.